Hi everybody, welcome to Pittsburgh Sports Now. I'm Doug Biega, your basketball insider, and it is my honor to be sitting here with Coach, with Coach Keith Dimebrot from the University of Duquesne. Coach, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, you've been doing this for a long time. You spent most of your, not just coaching career, but your actual life in one place, in Akron, Ohio, correct? That's Yeah, I had about a 12 year hiatus when I left. But, sure. Uh, most of the years were there. So now looking back on your first year here at Duquesne University, how easy, how difficult was that transition from obviously a place where you were comfortable with every surrounding being there to, to a whole new deal? Well, I think, you know, the best way to describe it was I kind of felt like uh, it was very similar to Akron for me in the sense that when I coached at Akron, they felt like one of their own was coaching them. I went to school there, my mother was a professor there, my son and my daughter went to school there. Uh, Duquesne's fans have been similar similar in the sense that, you know, my dad played here, so they feel like one of their own is coaching. So from that perspective, it's been a fairly easy uh, adjustment. The biggest thing is when I walk around Akron, I went to kindergarten with that guy. Yeah. I played Little League Baseball with him. You know, I knew a lot of people in town, so that's been the biggest adjustment, just not knowing as many people, but, uh, you know, that's fine, too. Do you have any favorite restaurants here yet? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of good restaurants. I, of like, I like to eat, so this is, <laughs> this is a good place when you like to eat. Sure. Um, this past season, I remember watching one of your uh, post-game interviews on the local news, and something jumped out at me, and I immediately got on my phone, and I called a couple of my friends in this coaching profession, and I said, this guy's my kind of guy. You weren't happy after a game. I believe you had a problem with just the effort, the toughness that the team displayed. That is something that you have, that's been your calling card as a coach. Uh, you have always been a defensive minded guy, which I love. Uh, you have always coached with a chip on your shoulder. You have demanded that your players play with that same chip on your shoulder. I don't care how gifted you are offensively, eventually you're gonna have to defend your position, otherwise your value is diminished in my eyes. And I think that you share that philosophy. How hard is that, was that, or we're on our way to instilling that culture here at Duquesne now? Well, it, it's not that hard. You know, you just demand it. And really, that's the only change we made when we took over at Akron, who hadn't been in the NCAA tournament since 1986, is we made those same group of guys uh, accountable at the defensive end. And that's really what we, we're going to do here, is basically try to make a team understand that you're not going to ever win championships until you play great defense. Obviously, your offense can get you in trouble, and you have to be able to put the ball in the basket, but you're never going to win championships in any sport if you don't play good defensively. And we feel like that that's an area that we can excel in in this league. Uh, this is a league that the best teams that have won in this league have been defensive-oriented, so we, we know that that's the key to success. And that's the focus of your program, obviously, is, is to defend. That's, that's what your goal is. That's your mantra, basically. Well, there's no question. I mean, that's the one area that you can control every single sure. night. Like on certain nights, you're not going to put the ball in the basket or you might not be uh, very fluid offensively. You might not be moving well. You might not handle the ball great, but you can always play great defense. Sure, sure. Um, you and I had a previous relationship. We discussed it earlier before we came here. You actually recruited one of my Beaver Falls athletes, Lance Jeter, uh, when you were at Akron, which was now not the date us both, but that was about 12 or 13 years ago. Um, how has recruiting changed since you and I talked 12 years ago about Lance to what you were doing today? It's changed, but it's still the same. I mean, and what I mean by that is it's still relationship-based. Mm -hmm. And people are going to uh, go to places that they have the best relationship with, not only the assistant coach, but the head coach, and also the track record of that person. So, uh, you know, obviously, if we go out east and we go way to the – you know, New York, Philadelphia, we don't know those people, so we don't have as good of relationships. But if we stay to the western Pennsylvania, we stay in Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, we know a lot of people. So it's relationship-based. You, you have to build a relationship with the student, the high school coach, uh, the AAU coach, obviously, and the parents, and figure out who's, who's really influential with that person, and then you go after them. And, and you mentioned that, that you like not that you like, but you prefer that west. Is that like a blueprint or a map where you lay out the, the areas we really want to target? Like we're, we're, we're going to avoid Philly. We're not going to avoid it, but we're going to pick our spots with Philadelphia and New York. We want to make our niche in certain areas geographically. Well, if you look at the history of Duquesne, and I, I can go way back because my dad played here, obviously. Mm -hmm. When my dad played here, it was a lot of New Yorkers, mm -hmm. a 
a lot of uh, Pennsylvania and a little bit in Ohio, but again, you have to know where your strengths are. And for us, you know, our strengths are in the Midwest, so we're going to try to get the majority of our players from the Midwest. Western PA has been very good to us. We've had a lot of good players from Western PA. Uh, Brian Walsh, uh, Zeke Marshall, Steve McNeese, Steve Swick, all those guys played for us. So we've got good ties in Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh in particular. And then we're going to use our Michigan ties. We have two guys on our staff from Michigan and really go up and attack Michigan, which is a good basketball state. Steve McNeese, actually, he's your director of basketball operations, I believe. Uh, he and I played against each other. He was he played for his dad, who's a great coach at Shenango, and that was one of our Beaver Falls championship teams. Was against Steve. He was a great player. Well, he'll, Steve, be, he'll be a good recruiter too. He'll be a good coach. Well, Steve actually, you know, signed here out of high school mm -hmm. uh, when we were at Akron, and then Danny and he got fired, and he came with us at Akron. So Steve's really been good for us because again, he knows this area. A lot of people know mm -hmm. him. Uh, he shot the ball every time he touched it in high school, so they, they know he can score, right? He did, and, and he'll deny it, maybe. But no, he doesn't deny it. I put, well, he'll deny it. We put a freshman on him, and, and we held him to like his lowest point total of the year that day. The freshman ended up playing outside linebacker at Pitt, so it was no run-of-the-mill oh, yeah. guy. But we guarded. We, it was probably one of our better games defensively was against Steve, and that's the part he'll deny. Yeah, the, the thing we always laugh with Steve is we tell him he only shot it when it was in his hands. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a true statement. That's a true statement. You have a high school background, which I would think helps you with recruiting. You know, you're one of us. You know, I, I could sometimes high school coaches would tend to have a perception of college coaches that they're a little bit above them in, in certain ways. But you're one of uh, you are a high school guy. Uh, there was a player that you had in high school that some people may or may not have ever heard of. Uh, you coached LeBron James for a couple years, uh, two correct? Two years. Two years. Awesome, right? Uh, the, the, an experience, you I would think. Um, my question is when. Was there an occurrence, where was, an, was there an instance when you were coaching LeBron that you sat back and said, I mean, everybody knew how good he was, but that you sat back and said, he's better than people think. Like now he's arguably one of two of the greatest players who ever picked up a ball. Was there ever anything that you saw that you said, this is what he is? Well, I knew, uh, I knew, you know, about a third of the way through his freshman year that he was special. He wasn't big and strong, he was 6'4", 170 pounds, but he, his instincts, his knowledge of the game, his ability uh, uh, to make other players better. I knew he was a special player, and then by his sophomore year, I knew he had never he would never go to college. Sure. I had had three guys that had played in the NBA uh, prior to him, so I knew kind of what an NBA guy looked like, and just his brain and his, his brain really would separate him. He had unbelievable skill level as well, but his brain is second to none. And that's, I would argue with most people today to, and say that that's really why he is what he is right now. I would, I would agree with that. Now, also as a person, you see what he's doing now with the I Promise school that he just built in Akron, Ohio. It's, was there ever a, a thing that jumped out at you when you had him that he's, he's really a great person too, not just a basketball player. Like I have something really special in front of me right now. Well, he's a terrific teammate. I okay. mean, uh, those were in the days when uh, Dewan Wagner was scoring 100 points in a game. And LeBron, we'd play a bad team and he'd get 12. And basically, you know, getting his play, his teammates involved, not worrying about what he what he scored, always playing the right way, making the right play. And you just don't make people like that anymore. The kids nowadays are so caught up into, you know, points and themselves that you don't see people like him. So he's a very special guy. And uh, he, d he does a lot for that community in Akron and Cleveland. And he's done a lot of great things. And I'm just more proud of what he's done off the court than on the court, which is a shocking statement. Well, it, it is, but he's doing some amazing things off the court. And you're from the community. That community is very appreciative of it, I would, I would assume. No doubt. And yeah. I, I think, you know, they really understand what he's done and what he stands for. And, uh, you know, just proud of what he's done. And uh, hopefully he can win a couple more championships as well. Right. Relationship with him still? Frequent communication? Well, I, I would argue that we wouldn't have been as good a program at Akron if it wasn't for him. You know, we're, we're one of the few schools in the country, I think Ohio State and us, that are the only two LeBron schools. So mm -hmm. the shoe deals, as you know, are, are a big deal for yeah. uh, guys choosing colleges. And the relationship with him allows us to get into a lot of doors. You know, uh, they automatically think you're a pretty good coach when you coach him. Yeah, right? Yeah, it adds to your resume for sure. Now, Coach, there's something we want to do here at Pittsburgh Sports Now. When, when we know we're going to have someone such as yourself, we reach out via social media for some of your alumni, some of your fans, big guys in the program that are fans of yours as well, uh, for questions that they may have for you. Um, we have three that we picked out. 
uh, Grant Wolf writes, how do you prepare transfer athletes to be back in game form after sitting out for a whole year? I'm assuming that means that competitive edge that you naturally need to stay sharp for a whole year. So how is it that you're doing that with the guys that you're having coming in, having sit out, sat out a year? Well, it's a new thing for us, really. Mm -hmm. we, we had very few transfers and very few junior college players in Akron. I think we had four transfers and two junior college players in 13 years at Akron. So last year, because of trying to build credibility and you know make people believe that we could you know we can get really good players we took five transfers mm -hmm. and that's a new deal for us so I'm not an expert on it at all uh, but they're good talented guys so we just tried to coach them like we did our our, our guys that are eligible and uh, you know hopefully that will be enough and uh, you know I know a lot of them have worked hard on their game and have used the year to really be successful right. and some guys some guys are good at that and some guys aren't well, I would think that you know they wouldn't be going to Duquesne if they weren't high-level competitors. You're a Division One athlete. Competition's kind of what's in your DNA. So I would think that's something that you know you wouldn't have to work real hard to keep sharp. Well, that's true, but everybody's a little different. Yeah. You know, some guys need uh, some guys need prodded into doing the things they they need to do, and other guys you don't have to say much to. Mm -hmm. You know, there's very few gym rats today, so you have to force guys into the gym as a coach in order to make sure that they're successful and really you're doing it for them. I always tell our guys, look, you need to invest in yourself. This is an investment in yourself to become what you should be. Yeah, very well. Um, Jackson Pollock writes, last year the Duquesne Dukes got significant contributions from freshmen, specifically Eric Williams. At this early point in the practices, have any of them jumped out at you as someone who's gonna be an immediate contributor next year? Well, you know, I try not to make uh, quick judgments I think all of them are going to be good players. I'm, I'm impressed with our freshman class. We've got good size. We've got good skill. We've got good brains. Uh, obviously, the jump to college basketball and the differences between high school basketball and college basketball, specifically the length of the season, uh, strength, uh, just the consistency that you need to be a good college player uh, will affect those guys. But I think they're all going to be good players. But it's a little early to tell sure. which ones end up being the best. Sure. Uh, our last question was from John C., and he asked how, if any, upgrades are coming to the facilities. And you and I just spoke off camera a little bit about that. I love this place. I think it's a phenomenal arena. I've had a lot of good memories here as a coach. I think your campus is the best kept secret. You have a city five feet away, and then you have a land grant college type of layout right behind the wall. It's, it's a beautiful setting. Uh, I would love for my son to come here one day. I think Duquesne's a wonderful place, a wonderful campus, high notch, top notch education. So, are there any movements being made by administration, by yourself, to upgrade facilities? I guess that would specifically lead toward the recruiting aspect. Of it. Well, there's going to be an upgrade in the facilities, just a matter of when. Okay. Uh, so, Dave Harper, our athletic director right now, is raising money to that point, and I believe it'll be sooner than later. And I think you know when you look at a lot of the schools around the country that have upgraded their facilities, generally they're their, uh, their basketball program improves. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at Xavier when they got their new facility. You look at Gonzaga when they improved their facility. Uh, you look at Dayton, who obviously has an unbelievable facility and continue to put more money in. Uh, those places take jumps, and it becomes an arms race anymore. You know, where uh, it's very important that that, uh, that you have uh, top flight facilities, top flight food, top flight equipment, uh, because kids are choosing schools based on what they have. Okay, great. Uh, as a Duquesne fan, what are we going to see this team look like this upcoming season? What's the identity of this year's 18-19 Duquesne Duke basketball team? Well, we're going to be a little bit more skilled than what we were last year. Um, we're going to be a little bit bigger, for sure. All around size, we're going to be much bigger. Um, you know, we're always going to be a blue-collar type of team that tries to out-tuck, uh, out-defend play better together than the opponent. Uh, but we feel like we have Atlantic 10 caliber talent. We just have to put some miles on them. You know, uh, sure. Usually teams that win are a little bit older, but the good thing for us is if we can win this year, we're gonna have everybody back. So it's a team that's you know pretty pretty much built for the future. And I think the one thing that, that's a little bit different in college basketball now is uh, young people are a little bit uh, more acclimated to come into play because they played so much on the road in AAU basketball and there's so much travel going on. So these guys have been more places than we've been. And so I think the, the adjustment or the excuse that you're, not, you're too young to win is, it kind of goes out the window. Coach, thank you so much for Appreciate your time. You. Thank you for having me.
Well, there you have it, Pittsburgh. This is Doug Biega. Thank you for letting me take you inside college basketball.